Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now Valve has made a surprise announcement and announced a new portable gaming device called the Steam Deck. Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So there are lots of interesting things to discuss about the new Steam Deck. So it's a portable gaming device. I'm sure there's going to be lots of comparisons between it and the Nintendo Switch and the new version of the Nintendo Switch. Now the real fundamental thing to understand here is this is a PC. It's a PC in a small box with a touch screen on it using a special custom processor from AMD. And for me, the most interesting question is what OS is it running? And the default OS that it comes with is Arch Linux. By the way, I use Arch. I mean, that's going to actually happen every time now someone has a Steam Deck in their hands. Someone can say, oh, by the way, do you know you're using Arch? So there we go. It's using Linux. Now, of course, uh, most Steam games are written originally for Windows, some for Mac, but Steam Valve have been working for years on their Proton compatibility layer that allows uh, Windows uh, games to run over on Linux. So let's start by looking at the custom APU from AMD. So of course it's an x86 uh, processor, the same as you would find in a laptop or in a desktop. 64 bits of course, 4 cores and 8 threads and it comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now for the graphics you've got RDNA graphics with 8 CUs. Do look at my video, can AMD save Samsung Exynos for an explanation of how those CU combinations work and in that video particularly I look about how it would work on mobile. Now the interesting thing is it draws between 4 and 15 watts of power. Now 4 watts is the kind of levels you're talking about when you're dealing with smartphones and 15 watts is the kind of level you're talking about when you're dealing with laptops and they said it draws between those two. Now obviously it depends on what the processor is doing. If you're playing a game then I'm sure that's going to be going up towards the 15 watt end. If you're just browsing the web or something then that's going to be down at the lower end. In fact it has a 40 watt hour battery in it and you can do the maths. If you're running max at 15 watts well what are you going to get? 15 watts is one hour, 30 watts makes it two hours, uh, 45 watts would be three hours, even about two and a half hours of intense gaming. But they say on their website that if you're doing lighter stuff, if you're using the web, for example, then you're going to get several hours out of it. And of course, that's because if it's using four watts, well, technically you get up to 10 hours out of it if you were using it at the four watt level. Now, if you've seen my videos recently on can your PC upgrade to Windows 11, the good thing is, is that this handheld device, this Steam Deck, actually has a Zen 2 based uh, processor in it, which means it would be compatible with Windows 11. Whether Windows will actually understand it as a processor, that is yet to be seen. But why do I say that? Because this is actually a PC in a handheld unit, yes, you can install other operating systems on it. If you want, you can get rid of Linux and Steam that come by default and you can install a different version of Linux or you can install uh, Windows on there, Windows 10 for sure, Windows 11 maybe. Now Valve have been keen to point out they're doing a lot of work on Proton, that's a compatibility layer between Windows and Linux for gaming and they're saying by the time the device comes out in December probably every game in the Steam library will be compatible with the Steam Deck. Of course, one question is what about anti-cheating software? At the moment, it's well known that the anti-cheating stuff doesn't work on Linux when you're using SteamOS, but uh, Valve are confident they are working with the anti-cheating providers and they're gonna have that working by the time the Steam Deck hits the shelves. If you also notice, it does have a USB port, it does have Wi-Fi, it does also have Bluetooth, lots of connectivity options, and the USB-C port can be used to connect to a dock, and that dock can provide charging, and also things like a USB-A connector and HDMI, so you can actually then connect this up to mouse, keyboard, a monitor, and actually use this as a normal PC, which would be quite an interesting idea. So let's quickly talk about pricing for a moment. There are three models. The first one comes with 64 gigabytes of eMMC memory. Then there are two versions with more uh, internal storage, one with 256, one with 512 gigabytes, but they use NVMe SSD, so much faster storage access there. The cheapest one is $399, which turns into about 419 euros. For the 256 gigabyte version, you're going to pay $529 and $649 for the 512 gigabyte version. In Europe, that's going to be 549 euros and 679 euros respectively. 
The Steam Deck will start shipping in December of this year, 2021. It will be available in North America, so that's the United States and Canada, in the European Union and in the UK, and then of course much further afield sometime in 2022. So pre-orders will be open probably by the time you start watching this video. And so the question is, do you want a Zen 2 quad-core RDNA 2 graphics, 16 gigabytes of RAM, handheld gaming device running Linux? If you do, check out the Steam Deck. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this look at the Steam Deck. Please do tell me in the comments below what you think about it. Is it interesting the fact that it runs Linux? Are you just more concerned that it plays the games really well? Will you be hacking it to do something completely different? Interesting to hear your thoughts. If you want to follow me on social media, do go over to Twitter and you'll see me there at Gary Explains. I also have a newsletter, GaryExplains.com. Type in your email address, no spam, just the newsletter, and I think you'll find it interesting. As you can see today, I'm not in my office recording. I'm in the great outdoors, enjoying a bit of the sunshine. I hope the background noise was okay. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.